Welcome to Mojo Plays, and this is our list for the best Mortal Kombat 11 endings. Not every ending is worth a run in the arcade mode, but MK11 had some really good ones, so we just had to make a list of our favorites. You have no family. Yes, I am an orphan, Behan. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For every character, their final confrontation is against Kronika. Once she is defeated, the Hourglass of Time is left in their possession, essentially allowing them to rewrite history how they see fit. What do they do with that power? Let's find out. The hot-blooded Johnny Cage. Got a fever burning inside of me. The only cure is killing you. Devora. That is the humanoid word for the chitin and our fellow insectoids. But with the hourglass, this one can review history and give lie to that myth. For far too long, the chitin have been mistreated and viewed as the lowest form of life. Hey, when you use others for creating insectoid beasts, you're gonna get weird looks. In Devorah's ending, she uses the hourglass to craft a timeline where the chitin are the dominant race. One in which pesky humanoids finally take the places they deserve. Both Earthrealm and Outworld are crushed beneath the hive's feet, literally and figuratively, leaving the chitin to rule all realms. It kind of reminds us of those cheesy science fiction B-movies from the 60s, although we can't help feeling just a smidge grossed out. Scrambling beneath our feet. Scarlet. Of all his daughters, Shao Kahn made me deadliest. Speaking of getting grossed out, have you met Scarlet? Well, this woman is all about blood. So what could her ending possibly be about? Battlefields bathed in blood? A throne oozing fruit punch? Endless murder? How about yes to all three? When I bind the blood code to the sands of time. Scarlet blends the sands of time with the blood code, we see what you did there, Nether Realm, to create a timeline where she kills all who oppose her, covering the realms in shiny shades of red. Scarlet even manages to overthrow Shao Kahn, becoming the new ruthless ruler of Outworld. This ending really shows just how psychopathic Scarlet truly is, almost on the same level as Melina. So there's plenty of reason to be a tad frightened by her. All will worship me, or there will be blood. Kung Lao. There was only one thing I wanted to do with the hourglass. Undo the defeat of my ancestor, the great Kung Lao. Poor Kung Lao has often been overshadowed by his Shaolin brother, Liu Kang. Even the rest of the Mortal Kombat cast will mock him for being second fiddle to Earthrealm's champion. Luckily, Kung Lao is one of the most kick-ass endings in the game. He uses the hourglass to go back and save his ancestors, the Great Kung Lao, from dying at the hands of Goro. Because the Great Kung Lao survived, he reigns as Earthrealm's champion, never losing a tournament. When Onaga the Dragon King arrives, guess who comes to save them? And finds Earthrealm backed by Kung Lao. Immortal Lord of Time and Warrior Supreme. Kung Lao, Immortal Lord of Time and Warrior Supreme. Bad ass. Beat that, Liu Kang. Scorpion. But once I controlled the hourglass, I could not keep that promise. The ghost of Sparta isn't the only anti-hero seeking vengeance for his family's death. Scorpion has been at this since 1992, and in MK11, he is met with a terrible fate. As he continuously forms and reforms history, he discovers that his family is destined to be killed, making it impossible to craft a timeline where they're kept alive. My family's tragedy repeated. I was powerless to change it. The Shirai Ryu Grandmaster soon figures out that this destiny is made by a race more powerful than the Elder Gods, the Titans. You know, this could be an awesome premise for a Scorpion of War game. Wink wink, nudge nudge, stabby stabby. We are pawns in the game. Why, I do not know, but I will find out. Katana. As I gazed upon the hourglass, I knew what I must do. Katana didn't get to enjoy the Adenian life before she was taken by Shao Kahn. So while she is Adenian in blood, she knows nothing about her heritage, which makes her arcade ending bittersweet. Katana uses the sands of time to restore Adenia and his people, but realizes she doesn't know anything about their language or culture, thus making her feel like an outsider. The truth was hard. Though Adinian by blood, I am not an Adinian. 
However, she remembers her place as Outworld's Khan and vows to use ancient Adenian culture to forge a better Outworld. It's sad that Katana will never get to interact with her own people, but we were happy to see her come to terms with her new life. Not many people could do that. I will fulfill my life's mission to better all of Outworld's people, including Adenia. Jade. I held the power to shape time and destiny, but I was lost. Much like our Princess Katana, Jade displays noble motives in her arcade ending. At first, she faces a difficult decision. Does she use the Sands of Time to help Katana ascend to the title of Khan of the Outworld, or does she use it to restore her love, Kotal Khan? I heard Kotal's voice call out to me. Follow your heart, Jade. Surprisingly, she chooses neither and develops a timeline that benefits everyone. She resets the timeline and conjures a world where Shao Kahn never existed, allowing her and Kitana to grow up together. When she reaches adulthood, Jade manages to kill Cetrion and Shinnok before they could create wars. Sounds like this timeline has no downsides, so long as Jade remains as Keeper of Time. I sensed that I was no ordinary child. Kronika's power dwelled within me. Geras. So I took her power to do what she could not. I would create one final perfect timeline. What would Kronika's crony do as the Keeper of Time? This question was what made Gera's ending so intriguing. Instead of simply taking over Kronika's duties, the immortal Garrus attempts to create the perfect timeline. Unfortunately, us humans are incredibly stubborn, making Garrus's goal difficult. Timeline after timeline, my frustration grew. I began to understand why Kronika had been driven to madness. As his last resort, he fuses himself with the sands of time, allowing him to finally rest. Knowing Kronika has repeatedly resurrected him, he can only imagine the inhumane madness he's endured from the endless cycle of death and rejuvenation. So, it was a relief to see him finally able to rest. And for the first time in all eternity, I can rest in peace. Jax. Now I have the power to fix history. Raiden warns me. I can't fix everything. Here's a thought. If you had the ability to travel back in time and prevent an atrocity committed against your culture, or by your culture, wouldn't you want to prevent that? For Jax, he's the embodiment of that dream in his ending. He could have easily forged a timeline that solely benefits his daughter Jackie, but instead chooses to help the world. In particular, his biggest goal is to prevent the Atlantic slave trade from ever happening and usher in a new era of peace. And I'm not waiting centuries for people to get woke when I've got the power to speed things up. Jax does say it took him multiple attempts to get the right result, meaning he may have changed other things than just the slave trade, but Jax's final words can resonate with anyone, even those who thinks he's foolish. Turns out, you can have everything. Anyone who says you can't needs to dream bigger. Johnny Cage. So I get the hourglass to show me how kicking Shinnok's ass which I did beautifully, turned me from Hollywood megastar into global icon. Johnny Cage may be the overconfident doofus of the cast, but you gotta admit the man has a heart of gold. This is especially evident in his arcade ending. Narrated by his younger self, Johnny is pretty happy with what his life has become. He's married to Sonya Blade, has a daughter, and built a career in the military. So he keeps the timeline the way it is. Unfortunately, he kind of screws up in his Hollywood life, but quickly recovers from it. There was one tiny detail he changed in the timeline. Sonya is kept alive. Because Johnny Cage flicks always have happy endings. Well said, you lovable jerkwad. 99, 100. Jackie Briggs. And I could think of only one thing. Dad. Killed. Made a revenant. You know, it's one thing when MK11's story mode makes us cry. It's another when something as short as an arcade ending opens the floodgates, which is why Jackie's ending gets our pick for the best of the lot. Killed. Made a revenant. Resurrected. Since coming back, Dad's never forgotten the things he did for Quan Chi. Ever since her father's mentality became unstable, Jackie has wanted a better life for him. And so she rewinds time back to the events of MK9, specifically the part where Sindel is about to murder most of Earthrealm's defenders. This time, Jax and company survive. However, this means Jackie's parents never meet. She is erased from existence. Her last words... I know you'll never hear this, but... Goodbye, Dad. I love you. 
check out these other great clips from Mojo Place, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.